Bayleaf Baptist Church has such a special place in my heart. The Scott family joined Bayleaf back in 1978. My mother and father-in-law, Wanda and Henry Scott, were very active serving here. About 10 years later, I met my husband, Steve, and we started coming to church regularly, and I even joined the choir. And then in 1989, we were married here. A few years later, one of my dreams came true when God blessed us with a bouncing baby boy, and then a couple years later, my beautiful baby girl. We were a young and busy family. We both had successful careers. Our children were in the best preschool um, in the area at the time, and we were all very involved here at Bayleaf on Sunday and Wednesday evenings. In 1997, um, we had just gotten a little place at Harker's Island, and we had a beautiful new boat, and everything was going really great. Um, in January of that year, however, I had a routine physical, and one of the tests that was part of that physical came back with abnormal results. So I met with the doctor, and he just um, said he wasn't concerned, that it was pretty normal, and um, the course of action was that I would come back every three months um, for follow-up. So that's what we did, and the second uh, test that I had actually came back normal, so I was so relieved. But by the third um, exam that I had to have, um, I had started ha having some mild symptoms, and I even met with a doctor about those before he examined me, and he still was not concerned, said this was normal, but when he started to examine me, um, I could tell that he was visibly shaken. And um, he said, we are going to do a biopsy right this minute and we're going to send it to Rex Hospital because I need expedited results. So um, I just committed that to the Lord and a couple of days later, um, my husband and I had gone to uh, Gastonia, North Carolina, where my sister was about to give birth to her first baby, and I was with my entire family in her hospital room when we got the call, and it was my doctor, and he said those words that no one ever wants to hear, it's cancer. When I think back about that time, and what was going through my mind, my most vivid memory is of the spiritual warfare that was so intense around me. It was like the forces of heaven and hell were vying for my life. And I remember thinking, how am I gonna share this news with my family who's all gathered together in this hospital room at what is supposed to be the most joyous occasion in somebody's life, the birth of a new baby? And then I was thinking, how am I gonna tell my sweet mother-in-law who just buried her husband from the same disease? And then the enemy really tried to use the image of my husband and my two little children alone without me as a weapon against me. After getting the diagnosis, I immediately um, had an appointment scheduled with a surgeon in the area who was the best in his field and in less than a week, I was in a six and a half hour operation. And I was later to find out that um, I had a very aggressive uh, form of cancer that had doubled in size just from my exam from the surgeon until surgery. And I was also to find out that uh, that cancer had spread to my lymph nodes. But God, the rest of my story is pretty miraculous. I'm just so grateful for the tender loving care of my Heavenly Father because about two years before this diagnosis came, He prompted me to study His Word in two specific areas, which were faith and healing, and I just studied the ministry of Jesus over and over and over. I began to hide that Word in my heart and I'm so grateful for that prompting because he knew that something was coming into my life that I didn't. When I heard those words in my sister's hospital room that day, like I mentioned, it was like the forces of heaven and hell were vying for my life. But the word of God that I had hidden in my heart came immediately to deliver me. Psalm 112, seven and eight says, I shall not be afraid of evil tidings, 
My heart is firmly fixed, trusting in the Lord. My heart is established and steady, and I will not be afraid while my desire is established upon my adversaries. As far as I'm concerned, that was a word from God for me personally and specifically. And from that moment forward, it settled me, and I never had any fear for my life going forward, even through the surgery and the chemo and the radiation that would follow. I was able to minister to my own family from a position of faith and not fear so that they were too able to walk this journey with me filled with faith and not fear. There were so many remarkable moments in my testimony, but I want to share with you one of my favorites, and that is the moments right before my surgery. My doctor and his team were all uh, surrounding me. They all had on their surgery scrubs, and he asked me if there was anything I wanted to say. And I said, yes, there's two things I want to say to you. One is, please make sure you get me to sleep. <laughs> and then the second one was, um, we have prayed for your for you and your team, and we've prayed for a perfect surgery. And with that, I counted from 100 to 99, and I was out. But the next thing I remember is very vivid, and that was when my surgeon came to visit me in recovery. And he just said, Melissa, in all the years that I've been doing this, and I'm a specialist in my field, I have never had a perfect surgery until today. And I knew that God had performed a miracle that day. Three years later, my doctor called me cured. He called me a miracle. I'm happy to report that 20 years later, this past March, I had another clear report. And it's such an honor for me to be able to celebrate this part of my life and this part of my journey with my family at Bayleaf Baptist Church because so many of you were here at that time and walked with me through the fire. I am forever grateful for the faithfulness of God. He has proven to me time and time again that if I abide in Him and believe His Word, that there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain in my life. He is able and He is faithful. And to that I say, Amen.